Okay, guys, good morning, Monday morning. Here we are, a brand new quarter. So, um, all right, today let's talk about graphing roots, okay? Graphing the square root of y, y equals the square root of x. So, one of the things I can do is I can put it on Desmos and I can take a look at it. I um, hope everybody has Desmos on their smartphone. It really makes a big difference. Um, okay, so now, if I'm going to graph the square root of x, I may have to put a couple of tricky things in here. Y equals and I don't see it there y equals oh there it is right in front of me square root <laughs> square root of x there it is okay let me just scoot it over okay looks like that now a couple of things about it one there's no graph over here because you can't have the square root of a negative number because those are imaginary we've talked about those so there's no graph over here it just starts at zero goes over okay so some important points are like here. And so then it's like a bunch of decimals. Take a look at those ugly decimals. See that? I don't know if you guys can see that or not. But so <coughs> when I graph it, to make it easy, these are the ones I like to see. I like to see the square root of 0, square root of 1, I like the square root of 4, I like the square root of 9. And these are the numbers I need simply because these are perfect squares, right? So I took the square root of 0, the square root of 0 is 0, and that's why I'm going to put a point at 0, 0. If I take the square root of 1 is 1, so I'm going to put, go over 1, the square root of 1 is 1. If I take the square root of 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, the square root of 4 is 2. If I take the square root of 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 is 3. And of course, the square root of 16 is on there also. Now. You cannot do the square root of negative 1. It won't work. So this is all the graph we get. Now, the rest of these numbers are what we call irrational numbers. Like, I'm not going to graph, for instance, the square root of 3. That's just silly. Square root of 3, no, nope, because that's just a 1.73. That's an ugly number. Same thing as square root of 2. Um, it's an irrational number. So I'm just going to put down just these. So that's all I need. And all the rest of the numbers, all the next rest of the values are in the graph. So this is my parent function. So my parent function, because it's the most basic, it is just the square root of x. What we'll do with this, though, is we'll move it around. We'll move it around. We'll do other things to it as well. But for right now, that's my parent function. So let's take a look at it. Domain. We just talked about the fact that there's no values back here. So it's not. It is not all real numbers. The domain is x has to be greater than or equal to 0. That's the domain. Starts at 0 and goes positive on the x-axis. The range, there's nothing down here because you can't take the square root of a negative number, so you won't have a negative answer. The range starts at a high to zero and goes up, so the range is y is also greater than or equal to zero, okay? The main range. Okay, you need to know that. So, let's take a look at example two. So in example two, there's a couple of ways. One, you could put it on Desmos, you really could. Um, come on. Here's my decimals. I go uh, subtract 4, but I already knew that basically it was just taking the whole graph down 4. So I'm going to take my parent function. I'm just going to move it down 4. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and put it down here. So it's just a translation. It's a vertical translation down Four. So one, two, three, four. And then I, I know it's this shape. Since it's a parent function, I'll do the same thing. Go over one, square root of one is one. I go over one, two, three, four. Square root of four is two. Okay, I know the next number is nine, so I'm going to go over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Square root of nine is three, okay? So again, I just did the square root of zero, square root of one, square root of four square to 9 and just start it down here okay all right domain range well domains again starts here the domain is simply going to be x is greater than or equal to 0 because look at the x values there's no x values over here this is my x axis at 0 x value of 0 and then it goes forward x is greater than or equal to 0 now the range starts down at a height of 4 negative 4 and goes up so the range is going to be a y is greater than or equal to negative 4. Okay? All right, there you go. All right. 
Moving on. So example three. So with example three, before I do anything, this endpoint. My endpoint. It's not a vertex. I kind of like it though. The endpoint, remember, it's the opposite of the inside. Always, 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 it's the opposite of the inside. So my endpoint is going to be at negative three, negative two. Okay, and the reason. It is the opposite because negative 3 zeros out. What value of x will zero it out to get it to the end? It's negative 3, so I've got a negative 3, negative 2. I've got my endpoint right there, and I'm going to take my parent function and move it here. Again, I'm going to use these square root square root 0 is 0. And then if I move over 1 from the endpoint, the square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4, I go 1, 2, 3, 4. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9, I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then square root of 9 is 3, okay? And again, you can put it back on Desmos if you really want to see it, but check it out. I'll show you. Of course, it's right. Um, I'm just going to simply go parentheses, and I'll do an x plus 3, and I'll close my parentheses, move it up, back over, close my parentheses, Move it over, subtract 2, and there it is, exactly like we have it. I'm just going to go ahead and fill it in, okay? Okay, domain. So remember, x values. x values is uh, negative 3 for the x value. It starts at negative 3 and goes forward. So the domain is simply going to be x is greater than or equal to negative 3. My y, my y value, down here at negative 2, starts at a height of negative 2 and goes up. So we're going to go y is greater than or equal to negative 2. All right, so those are square root graphs, domain, and range. Um, in your homework, then, you'll also do some stretching. Um, we'll take a look at that when we zoom, okay? So take a look at number. Next example, example 4. So this is a cube root. Before we do anything, though, think about this. You can take the cube root of negative numbers. You can. Before we do anything, cube root of negative 8. Well, that's going to be a negative 2 times a negative 2 times a negative 2. So the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. So you can do cube roots. Okay, let's see if I can even graph this. I don't even know. All right, see, I can do it a slightly different way. Okay, I don't know. There's probably a cube roots button here somewhere. I just don't know where it is. Um, equals, and I can do um, x to the power of one third is a cube root. There it is. Okay, there it is. There's my cube root. It looks just like that, okay? So that is basically a cube root graph. Let's put this parent function on there. But before I do that, let's put down a couple of things I know. I know the cube root of zero is zero. I know the cube root of one is one. I know the cube root, let's see, I want to use nice numbers. Well, the cube root of 2, 3, 4, actually, I have to go all the way to cube root of 8. That's the next one, because the cube root of 8 is 2. And then I can also do the negatives, right? I can do the cube root of negative 1. I'll do that over here. Well, I'm running out of room. I'll do the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1, because negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. And I can slide in the cube root of negative 8 is going to be a negative 2. Now, the next one's cube root of... 27, but that's not even going to be on my graph. So this is all we're going to put. So watch how I do this. Using these values, okay? So, cube root of 0 is 0. So I'll put a point at 0, 0. So there is a point at 0, 0. Cube root of 1. I'll go over 1. Cube root of 1 is 1. So I'll put a point at 1. If I go to the cube root of 8, let's see 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Cube root of 8 is 2. All right, let's see, cube root of negative 1. So if I go to negative 1, the cube root of negative 1 is a negative 1. There are negative cube roots. There really are. Cube root of negative 8, let's see. Let me go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 8, negative 8. Cube root of negative 8, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 2. So my function looks like this. Okay, there's my cube root again. Let me show you on my calculator. There it is, same exact graph. That's my parent function.
All right, so let's move it, okay? This is perfect cubes. So we already have those up here. Again, I'll really write them. The perfect cube. Oh, domain range. <gasps> Sorry, domain. Well, it's forever wide, isn't it? Domain is x equals all real numbers, but I like the symbol all real numbers. And the range, even though it looks like it's shallow enough, it's always going up. It is always going up. It's going to go up forever. It's just going to take a while to get there, but it's always going up. And even though it looks like it's shallowing out, it's always going down. It's forever. You keep going. It's going to eventually go all the way down, 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 but it just takes a long time. So the range is also y equals all real numbers. Okay, domain and range. How wide every x value, how tall every y value, okay? All right, now let's graph the last example. So again, I'm going to call this not a vertex. That's not a vertex, but it's where it bends. That's, we're going to call that an inflection point. We've talked about that before. In flexion point. So what I'm going to do is move my inflection point, like a vertex, to the point of negative 3, negative 5. Because it's always the opposite of the inside, because that zeroes it out. So it's always going to be the opposite. It's a horizontal change. So we're going to go to negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if I graph this, well, I'll use red. Again, I'm going to use my perfect cubes. So you ready? Perfect cubes. Oh, I'll rewrite them again. But we know the cubert of 0 is 0. The cubert of 1 is 1. The cube root of 2 is ugly decimal. Cube root of three, ugly decimal. So I gotta go all the way to the cube root of eight. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the cube root of eight is two, right? Um, cube root of 27 is three, but that's off my graph. Okay, now I can go backwards. I can go to negative one from my inflection point. The cube root of negative one is a negative one. I can go backwards. I'm gonna go back eight, because that's my next perfect cube root. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cube root of negative 8 is a negative 2. And there is my parent function just translated. So what do we do? We did a translation. We did a horizontal translation of back 3 and a vertical translation We went down five, and there it is. Now, domain range, that's easy. All real numbers, because look how wide that is. It's going forever, right? And range, uh, it will go up forever. It will go down forever. It's just going to take a long time to get there. Y is equal to the all real numbers as well, okay? That's what I have. And then your homework's out of your journal. It's not a very difficult assignment. Um, in um, Zoom, we'll talk more about these, okay? So that's what I got.